a necklace of raindrops. A man called Mr. Jones and his wife lived near the sea. One stormy night, Mr. Jones was in his garden when he saw the holly tree by his gate begin to toss and shake. A voice cried out, Oh, help me! Help me, I'm stuck in the tree! Help me, or the storm will go on all night! Very surprised, Mr. Jones walked down to the tree. In the middle of it all was a tall man with a long grey cloak and a long grey beard and the brightest eyes you ever saw. Who are you? Mr. Jones said. What are you doing in my holly tree? I got stuck in it, can't you see? Help me out or the storm will go on all night. I'm the north wind and it's my job to blow the storm away. So Mr. Jones helped the north wind out of the holly tree. The north wind's hands were as cold as ice. Oh, thank you, said the north wind. My cloak's torn, but never mind, you've helped me, so now I'll do something for you. I don't need anything, Mr. Jones said. My wife and I have a baby girl just born, and we're as happy as any two people in the whole world. In that case, said the North Wind, I will be the baby's godfather. My birthday present to her will be this necklace of raindrops. From under his grey cloak he pulled out a fine, fine silver chain. On the chain were three bright, shining drops. You must put it around the baby's neck, he said. The raindrops will not wet her, and they'll not come off. Every year on her birthday I'll bring her another drop. When she has four drops, she'll, she'll stay dry, even if she goes out in the hardest rainstorm. And when she has five drops, no thunder or lightning can harm her. And when she has six drops, she will not be blown away, even by the strongest wind. And when she has seven raindrops, she'll be able to swim the deepest river. And when she has eight raindrops, she'll be able to swim the widest sea. And when she has nine raindrops, she'll be able to make the rain stop if she claps her hands. And when she has ten raindrops, she'll be able to make it start raining if she blows her nose. Stop, stop, cried Mr. Jones. That's quite enough for one little girl. Oh, I was going to stop anyway, said the North Wind. Mind you, she must never take the chain off or it might bring bad luck. Must be off now to blow away the storm. I'll be back on our next birthday with the fourth raindrop. And he flew away, up into the sky, pushing the clouds before him, so that the moon and stars could shine out. Mr. Jones went into his house and put the chain with the three raindrops round the neck of the baby, who was called Laura. A year soon went by, and when the north wind came back to the little house by the sea, Laura was able to crawl about and to play with her three bright shining raindrops, but she never took the chain off. When the North Wind had given Laura her fourth raindrop, she could not get wet, even if she was out in the hardest rain. Her mother would put her out in the garden in her pram, and people passing by the road would, would say, Ah, oh, look at that poor little baby left out in all this rain, she'll catch cold. But little Laura was quite dry and quite happy, playing with the raindrops and waving to her godfather, the North Wind, as he flew over. Next year, her fifth birthday, he bought her her fifth raindrop. And the year after that, the sixth. And the year after that, the seventh. Now Laura could not be harmed by the worst storm, and if she fell into a pond or river, she floated like a feather. And when she had eight raindrops, she was able to swim across the widest sea. But as she was happy at home, she never tried. And when she had nine raindrops, Laura found that she could make the rain stop by clapping her hands. So there were many, many sunny days by the sea. But Laura did not always clap her hands when it rained, for she loved to see the silver drops come sliding out of the sky. Now it was time for Laura to go to school. Do you can guess how the other children loved her? They would call, Laura, Laura, make it stop raining, please, so that we can go out to play. And Laura always made the rain stop for them. But there was a little girl called Meg, who said to herself, It isn't fair. Why should Laura have that lovely necklace and be able to stop the rain? Why shouldn't I have it? So Meg went to the teacher and said, Miss, Laura's wearing a necklace. Then the teacher said to Laura, You must take your necklace off in school, dear, that's the rule. But it'll bring bad luck if I take it off, said Laura. Of course it won't bring you bad luck. I'll put it in a box for you and keep it safe till after school. 
So the teacher put the necklace in a box. But Meg saw where she put it. And when the children were out playing and the teacher was having her dinner, Meg went quickly and took the necklace and put it in her pocket. When the teacher found out the necklace was gone, she was very angry and sad. Who's taken Laura's necklace? she asked, but nobody answered. Meg kept her right hand tight in her pocket, holding the necklace. Poor Laura cried all the way home. Her tears rolled down her cheeks like rain as she walked along by the sea. Oh, she cried, what will happen when I tell my godfather that I've lost his present? A fish popped his head out of the water and said, Don't trouble me, Laura, dear. You will put me back in the sea. He went away. He was swimming on the sand. Well, I will help you find your necklace. And a bird flew down and called, Don't cry, Laura, dear. You saved me when a storm blew me onto your roof and hurt my wing. I will help you find your necklace. And a mouse popped his head out of a hole and said, Don't cry, Laura, dear. You saved me once when I fell in the river. I will help you find your necklace. So Laura dried her eyes. How will you help me? she asked. The water will look under the sea, said the fish. And I will help my brothers and sisters to help me. I will fly about and look at the fields and woods and roads, said the bird. And I will ask my brothers to help me. I will look in the houses, said the mouse. And I will ask my brothers to look in every corner and closet of every room in the world. So he set to work. While Laura was talking to her three friends, what was Meg doing? She put on the necklace and walked out in the rainstorm, but the rain made her very wet. And when she clapped her hands to stop it raining, the rain took no notice. It rained harder than ever. The necklace would only work for its true owner. So Meg was angry, but she still wore the necklace until her father saw her with it on. Where'd you get that necklace? he asked. I uh, found it in the road, said Meg, which wasn't true. It's too good for a child, her father said, and he took it away from her. Meg and her father did not know that a little mouse could see them from a hole in the wall. The mouse ran to tell his friends that the necklace was in Meg's house, and ten more mice came back with him to drag it away. But when they got there, the necklace was gone. Meg's father had sold it for a great deal of money to a silversmith. Two days later, Little Mouse saw it in the silversmith's shop and ran to tell his friends, but before the mice could come to take it, the silversmith had sold it to a trader who was buying fine and rare presents for the birthday of the Princess of Arabia. Then a bird saw the necklace and flew to tell Laura, The necklace is on a ship which is sailing across the sea to Arabia. We will follow the ship, said the fishes. We will tell you which way it goes. Follow us. But Laura stood on the edge of the sea. How can I swim all that way without my necklace, she cried. I will take you on my back, said a dolphin. You have often thrown me good things to eat when I was hungry. So the dolphin took her on his back, and the fishes went out in front, and the birds flew above, and after many days they came to Arabia. Now where is the necklace? called the fishes to the birds. The king of Arabia has it. He's going to give it to the princess for her birthday tomorrow. Tomorrow is my birthday too, said Laura. Oh, what will my godfather say when he comes to give me my tenth rain job and finds that I have not got the necklace? The birds led Laura into the king's garden, and she slept all night under a palm tree. The grass was all dry and the flowers all brown because it was so hot and had not rained for a year. Next morning, the princess came into the garden to open her presents. She had many lovely things, a flower that could sing, and a cage full of birds with green and silver feathers, a book that she could read forever because it had no last page, and a cat who could play cat's cradle, a silver dress made of spider webs and a gold dress made of goldfish scales, a clock with a real cuckoo to tell the time, and a boat made out of a great pink shell. And amongst all the other presents was Laura's necklace. When Laura saw the necklace, she ran out from under the palm tree and cried, Oh, please! That necklace is mine. The king of Arabia was angry. Who is this girl? He said. Who let her into my garden? Take her away and drop her in the sea. But the princess, who was small and pretty, said, Wait a minute, Papa. And to Laura she said, How do you know it is your necklace? 
because my godfather gave it to me. When I'm wearing it, I can go out into the rain without getting wet. No storm can harm me. I can swim any river and any sea, and I can make the rain stop raining. But can you make it start to rain? said the king. Not yet, said Laura, not till my godfather gives me the tenth raindrop. If you can make it rain, you shall have the necklace, said the king, for we badly need rain in this country. But Laura was sad because she could not make it rain till she had her tenth raindrop. Just then, the north wind came flying into the king's garden. Oh, there you are, goddaughter, he said. I've been looking all over the world for you to give you your birthday present. Now, where's your necklace? The princess has it, said poor Laura. Then the north wind was angry. You shouldn't have taken it off, he said, and he dropped the raindrop onto the dry grass where it was lost. Then he flew away. Laura started to cry. Don't cry, said the little princess. You shall have the necklace back, for I can see it is yours. And she put the chain over Laura's head. As soon as she did so, one of Laura's tears ran down and hung onto the necklace beside the nine raindrops, making ten. Laura started to smile. She dried her eyes and blew her nose. And guess what? As soon as she blew her nose, the rain began falling. It rained and it rained. The trees all spread out their leaves and the flowers stretched their petals. They were so happy to have a drink. At last Laura clapped her hands to stop the rain. The King of Arabia was very pleased. This is the finest necklace I have ever seen, he said. Will you come and stay with us every year so that we can have enough rain? And Laura said she would do this. Then they sent her home in the princess's boat made out of a pink shell, and the birds flew overhead and the fishes swam out front. I'm happy to have my necklace back, said Laura, but I'm even happier to have so many friends. What happened to Meg? The mice told the North Wind that she'd taken Laura's necklace, and he came and blew the roof off her house and let in the rain, so she was soaking wet.